All right, hit the button. Recording live from the E. Haley Memorial Studios, straight out of Almont, Ontario, it's time for This Death Clock Has 60 Minutes, your one and only weekly Warm Hordes news broadcast. It's 8 p.m. Wednesday night, the beers are cold, the news is fresh, and the death clock starts now. Before we get started this evening, we have to introduce everybody. I am the one and only Mift Gorax. Well, one of many Mif Gorax. A lot of there's a lot of Gorax spam going on. Don't they come in six packs? They come in six <laughs> packs now. Uh, but I'm the most Mif of of, of of the Mif Goraxes. Although I'm playing Mercs now more than I should be like the Mif Gorax. I should be like the Mif uh, Drudge or something along those lines now. Um, to my left is no other than PG Semi Automagic. Of course, it's your right. I think if you're watching the show, if you're watching the video, yeah, if right. you're watching the audio, I'm right behind you. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Uh, That's and uh, over on the other side is uh, Ringo to my John. Thank you for having me. And uh, the the guy who keeps this I whole play thing, the drums. I the, play the drums. Uh, the guy who keeps this whole <laughs> thing ticking along and makes sure that the transitions happen properly at the right time. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes they happen <laughs> twice. Our <laughs> guest this week is no other than Party Fowl's Scott Tellerico. Say good day, Scott. Hey, what's going on? Well, actually, what's going on tonight is we've got a few different topics we want to talk about. We're going to, of course, discuss the news. There's uh, there's not a ton of news coming out of PP nope. this week. They're very focused on the story campaign. Um, and then we are going to talk about death. We're going to get into the nitty-gritty, the dark and dirty. This machine's going goth. We're going goth. <laughs> We're going to talk about Let death. Let me get my eyeliner. The effect of death. It's going to be a sad day. Um, and how death works, because we had some interesting interactions happen uh, not too long ago with death uh, that we want to talk about. And then uh, ap- apparently in the news as well, there'll be some special announcement- announcements from uh, from somebody who shall remain nameless. And then last but not least, what we're going to do is uh, do a bit of a roundtable on uh, planning events and how to uh, get into that whole jam which for those people who want to become PGs, and there seems to be a lot of people out there, that is kind of how you do it's it. It's fun, it's rewarding, and it's probably the hardest thing you'll ever do. And the reason why we're going to talk about that is because uh, Scott, as most people probably don't know, um, we do because he because uh, we help him kind of promote some of his events. Scott, you, you do a ton of event planning behind the scenes. I mean, you're not just the party foul guy. You're also the, the guy that keeps kind of the... That whole uh, world ender thing ticking over, right? And the OTC. Yeah, I don't know. It kind of just happened. But uh, yeah, I run those two events uh, and they're both very different, but very fun to do. So so let's get into the news first off. Uh, this, As I said, there's not a ton of news coming out. I think the biggest uh, announcement this week was the uh, the story-based campaign dropped. Well, tell me a bit about that story-based campaign, George, and uh, we'll talk a bit about the character that uh, that we're going to all be playing. Well, um, the Crossroads of Cur- Crossroads of Courage, I believe it's is the yes. overarching yes. name yes. of it, um, is kind of a new thing for Privateer Press. Now, this has been done or at least things similar to this have been done by other game systems. And what it is, is it's a year-long narrative campaign that's going to end at the next lock and load. And what we do during this campaign, by uh, filling out the, the questionnaire and I think by reporting games, is that we will actually determine the um, how a model will turn out. Right. So the more people that go one direction or another will actually affect how the model is um, the model is going to grow as it right. were. And, and so at the beginning of each season, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna figure or at the beginning of each week you're gonna figure out which side you're on and you'll get to use a different version of the character depending on which one it is. So so here's a bit of a question. Mm-hmm. Do we all get this model? Like is there a model coming out from Privateer Press that we'll buy like right at the beginning of the campaign? Or is it just like we proxy Or at it? the end of it we get this thing? Uh, at the end of the year long campaign he will be released. Oh, there, okay. there is not actually a model. Now what there is is a there's a pair of cards that uh-huh. everybody who um, you know puts in for the swag gets as well as a coin. And the coin oh. will be used in the next season to do do things like determine how he'll react mm. in a certain situation or oh. something. You'll have to flip the coin. And whether he's got courage or whether he's... Uh, he's courage or coward. Coward. Yeah. Uh, like so they cool. did release the cards. We've had, to take, we've had a look at the card. Uh, Scott, did you get a chance to take a look at Holden's card today at all? No? Uh, no, I looked at anything. Too busy making sauce. 
to That's it. saucing it up. Uh, you got a chance to take a look at the card, though, Maelstrom, yeah. and uh, kind of anything interesting on that? I mean, it's a uh, very he base... Seems like, yeah, he's a pretty base character. Uh, he's got, a, I think, a range 10, pow 10 gun. He's got stealth. Um and he can take he's a second. Got a rat he seven, I think, and a mat five. Yeah, mat five, rat seven. Yeah, so, so he's that's got a high decent rat. rat yeah. And he uh, he can take a second shot if he stops and aims, which is pretty the, sweet. The coward one. Oh, be. is it only the coward one? That yes. Can yes. Uh, the, the other one has snipe, so uh, he can do uh, Verge has um, dual shot, refuse to die, and sniper. Cool. Yeah. So he's a merc character attachment that can go with any army. Any army, yeah. Um, yeah. And what's cool, merc does slash minion. A unit. Yeah, yeah, he attaches to a unit. So what's cool about that is that opens up some some uh, cool little options. Like we, like I was on the troll farm today, everybody's excited about it because they can add that to a creel stone, which a, a unit of creel stones just adds to its uh, to its super awesomeness. Because um, an extra person in there is pretty badass. Yeah, it gives them that, that extra inch. That extra inch. Um, there's a bunch of other cool interactions. Uh, yeah, and, and, and each it, depending on the courage of the cowardice thing, it'll be different. a different character you're playing. They both kind of have cool options. And Maelstrom's worried about the bugs in his nose. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. so moving right <laughs> along from that, uh, we did get two insiders this last week. We got we the did. Crix Insider. And we got the Troll Buds Insider. Mm-hmm. Um, the Troll Buds was uh, the new um, in-house p- uh, head of paints uh, or model. Uh, what do you want to call that? Uh, head painter at Private. Was Airbus. it Dallas? Yeah, Dallas Camp. Dallas Camp. Yeah. Um, and it's got a Skinner in it, so <laughs> it's just funny. So Skinner's OP. Somebody loves Skinners over at Privateer Press. They like super love the Skinner. They want them in everything. <laughs> um, w- what did you think of the uh, two lists brought out by those guys? Are I, I the Cricks list I liked more than the Troll list. Um, I I always kind of wanted to play Crix myself, um, and seeing double units of the new crows, the carrions, the carrions. Yeah. I was looking at that. I'm like, oh, that's that's really cool. Mm. I I kind of want to run a old witch carrion bird force, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, unfortunately, of course, she only can control live birds, so oh. we won't see that as a theme that's force as cool right. as that would be, but. Um, that, yeah, the Crick's list looked really good. It's an overwhelming dude spam in a land where dude spam had kind of disappeared. Well, and well, yeah, we'll see how dude spam does as the game kind of as the meta evolves down the road. Um, so that's kind of it um, as far as privateer press news. Nothing too super exciting to report. But now I want to just pass it over to Scott. Scott, tell us a bit about how the World Ender went, and then we'll lead into uh, maybe a little bit of announcements. No, yeah, the World Ender was a blast. It was everybody who doesn't know. It's a year-long event, uh, very similar to War Machine Weekend. Uh, there's qualifiers that we had, uh, Quebec, Ottawa, uh, Kingston, Rochester, Buffalo, uh, as far as Michigan. Like We went all over the place, and then basically we had 14 winners who qualified to get in. And then two players who got in through points for attending multiple events. Uh, and then we ran a last chance qualifier. So I guess it was 13. 13 got in and then we had a last chance qualifier uh, the night before the event. Thankfully, it only went three rounds. So that was <laughs> fast. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, it was, it was you know, it's a tournament. It was good. It was a good blast. Uh, just good quality players in a, in a 16-man event. You know, everybody was, everybody earned their way in. What uh, what was the final result? Who who was the who was the guy? The girl? Uh, David Bochamp won with Signar. Uh, Chris Orr got second place, and I can't pronounce his name. A nice guy from Quebec, uh, Lo- Louis Lochi, something L O I C or L I O C. And he probably goes to your events more so than mine. But he got third. He was uh, playing Cephalic, so it was really good Ooh, to see. Oh, nice. That's one of my. Oh, good. great. Good old. Uh, <laughs> they're legit, yo. Yeah, Cephalix. Uh, okay. Did he play two lists of Cephalix for, or did he just play the one? May might have been one, right. and then Mercs in the other one. Gotcha, gotcha. So probably, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, okay, so that's great. But the World Ender has left a uh, a desire to do more in your. Well, that's after the World Ender and some talks with people about the OTC and stuff. Uh, we felt maybe it was time to grow the event. So after one year of running the World Ender and people getting to know it and other you know stores running it for us and everything, uh, we've decided to uh, to go full on. So July next year we're going to run a con, and it, the kind of idea is we'll have multiple qualifiers throughout the year, and then the Sunday of the con would then be the World Ender 
invitational final again. Very nice. But Very it'll cool. be it'll be at a three day event. So uh, go ahead. So the this event, uh, it's it's more than just War Machine. It's going to be a sort of a, an, an overarching event. What what's the name of the event, and what what kind of things can we do there? Uh, it's tabletop uh, tabletop gaming expo. Nice. Very nice. nice. Um, it's going to be uh, primarily War Machine. Uh, there will be 40K as well. Uh, this year, that's all we're going to do because the hotel we're going at is uh, having some renovations, so it limited what we could do July next year because we know half of it's going to be renoed. So if it wasn't, then we were going to go full-blown and have you know card games and magic and everything else. But this is a little better. We can ease into the whole con thing and you know aim for 150 to 200 players and, and be comfortable there and not like we bit off more than we can chew. <clears throat> so you're so i was going to ask uh how many seats are you going to have for war machine uh and and what are the war machine events that you're hoping to run okay so uh i've talked to will hungerford a little bit already um chances are we're, we would get an ig qualifier if we want it um which is which would be cool it'll be on the friday if we don't do that on the friday we'll do the last chance qualifier for the world ender so that we can have like a massive event on the Friday and, and, and just play till whatever, two in the morning or whatever. <laughs> uh, the Saturday is going to have, uh, we're planning for the three man event. Um, and then the top team from that will get in. So even though the world ender final is on the Sunday, there will be eight players who qualify the actual con. Oh, There'll be enough that, events. That weekend. Weekend. Yeah. So even if you hadn't qualified yet or never played any of them, you can show up to this because you know, you're from the States or something like that and just win, another event so there'll be some probably a midnight qualifier or two because i always think those are fun it's a good time you know to play all night finish your last game at seven in the morning and then 10 in the morning though you know <laughs> go right in master starts and you're just like oh my god i'm so fried but that's you know <laughs> part of the fun so um, mo most important question will there be beer we are fully licensed in the actual convention so you can drink while playing Woo -doo. Ooh, yeah damn. and it's right out the hotel there's a hotel there's food there's restaurants everything's you know either in there or within walking distance there's so, uh, it, it's all really close so pray tell where is this event going to be and what hotel it's called the signature uh it's the signature, it's called the sandman signature it's just off of uh dixie i believe it's 2500 dixie it's in mississauga it's just uh south of the 401 so it's really central for anybody who's going to be driving in or uh, whether they're at the airport or something like that. I know if somebody flies in, which would be awesome, but uh, that's what we're looking at. It's uh, there's three main people partnered to do this. So I'm, you know, I've run the OTC, did the world ender, whatever, but I didn't feel confident enough to be like, Hey, I can just run a con on my own. Hey, you guys come play games with me. So um, I've got uh, Lionel who uh, has a store in Mississauga. So that gives us some, uh, some weight there. And, you know, you know, I can lean on him a little bit cause he's got some tables and clocks and everything. And, you know, I can lean on him for prizing because he's now involved in it, right? I can just be like, give me some stuff. And, you know, hopefully Lionel will be like, yeah, all right. That sounds like a good idea because he's going to benefit from it in the end anyways. And then we also got uh, Jason Flanzer. He is also uh, involved in this as well. So gives us some uh, state credibility, uh, some, some weight in the states as well. So hopefully he'll be able to drive a few players up our way. Sweet. Well, I mean, I'm excited because that's yeah. another big event that uh, that we will definitely be there uh, oh, yeah. in one way or another. Um, and if and we are there for your uh, live streaming needs, if uh, if you decide that that's the kind of thing you want to do, Scott. So we'll figure all that out in the. Long You're run. in, buddy. I got nobody else I would want. Oh yeah. Aww. Uh, we love you too. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that ju it just means we'll have to drag you away every once in a while to do a little bit of announcing. Yeah. Uh, oh, no. The team is back. The team is back. We got to get, get the band back together, you guys. Oh no! All right, so that was a ton of fun, man. I had a ton of fun doing that. That was, was really. Good. It's my. It's honestly. It, it's so. It's so much fun to do the announcing at this point that I almost want to do it more than playing. We were at. We did yeah, an event. We were actually what, two weeks ago. That. And I was like, man, George is like, you have to play in the Masters. And I'm like, oh, but I just wanted to sit and announce. <laughs> it's like, no, you have to play. Yeah, and then he missed getting in the top four by one game. Like <laughs> somebody else's game determined the strength of schedule and knocked him out of the top yeah, four. Now, out now, of now, I have to kill that, now I have to kill that guy. Um, <laughs> it was another Merc player, so I let him. I just let it, let it happen. Let it slide. He's Merc. All Quit right, playing. so uh, that's awesome. We're going to talk more about events and event planning, so we're going to sort of pick Scott's brain 
on that as well as uh, mm-hmm. we've got a we've got another guy who plans a few events sitting right beside yeah, me. Yeah, I may have done that a couple of times. I my only skill in all of this is that I I come up with really wacky versions of the game to play that generally involve ridiculous amounts of drinking. Um, and Maelstrom just plays in it a lot and and drinks and drinks, which <laughs> so it works out really well for I me. I play much better when I'm drinking, like. You, well, you've trained well, at I've George's trained. event. I kind of, I kind of have this this theory that you've played so many games drunk that if I don't know how to play, one if you're somewhere. not drunk, no that you have no recall yeah, of exactly. the rules. No, I went like zero and six at the event you ran because it wasn't a licensed event. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> All right, so here's what we're gonna do, guys. We're, but first, uh, can you queue up that uh, queue up that hit that button because it's time to get a little bit focused. So this week's focus, uh, what happened was, what we try to do, I guess the the behind-the-scenes thing uh, that most people don't know is what really happens when we come up with the focus is George plays a game with Jason or me, and we completely bork a rule set up. Yeah, we just blow it out of the <laughs> we water. We just completely <laughs> bork it. <laughs> and True. So, and then we go, Every what do time. we want to talk about this week? Well, why don't we talk about this rule that we that, completely screwed up? we just learned how to yeah. actually play. Um, something that uh, that most people know, Scott and, and Greg from Party Fell 4, is their rules videos. And we're hoping that uh, as Mark III comes out, that those two guys will knuckle down and do a whole bunch of new videos. Please. <laughs> in the next, in the next like two weeks, I think we'll start recording and getting some more out awesome. there. Just kind of, yeah. They were great. They, they were great as a PG because when someone would uh, <laughs> Teach you talk about a uh, rules interaction, I could just hot link them a YouTube video. <laughs> I actually um, had a text file with YouTube video, your YouTube video clips. Um, with all the rules next to them, so whenever somebody mentioned a rule, I could dump that in. <laughs> it was it was very useful. And and, and honestly, um, it was funny. The first this is going to sound really silly. But I'm going to admit something to Scott that he doesn't he he should never know because his head's just going to get huge. Is that I met Scott at the SOO the first time, and I had learned how to play War Machine because I didn't learn it from you. You just taught me. God no. Bunch, you just taught me a whole <laughs> bunch of crap that was wrong. I learned how to play War Machine by watching Scott and and Greg's videos. So when I met, when Scott came over, he's like, hey, I'm Scott. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> you fangirled. <laughs> you totally talked. fangirled. He just talked to me. <laughs> uh, which is kind of funny. And this explains why you're so bad at the game. That's why. Me. Yeah, I'm freaking terrible at this game. Um, so anyway, Scott's video, Scott and Greg make great videos. Um, they are universally hated by Reddit everywhere, but ignore all that. Because their videos, uh, or, or mention them if you want to see a, oh, a yeah. post drop so quickly. Oh, if you want to see a, post you don't on care Reddit. about your Reddit karma. <laughs> <laughs> Go in there and just. I love it. I just feed off it. I think yeah. it's hilarious. It is the most hilarious. Well, we at first were like, because when we were first podcasting, we were so worried about our Reddit karma. Like, oh, oh, we gave up. We want clout with Reddit, and yeah. then and then we realized that. They're just kind of jerky over there. They're, nope. they're yeah. like, no, we own this. All we it's care about really, is like painted models. It's really models. A, a poisonous community. It's not it, a. It didn't used to a, be that way. Oh, okay. When I first started playing War Machine, the Reddit community was one of the best communities. They really, were very supportive, um, very positive, and and just sort of in the last, basically since Scott started posting on there. <laughs> 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 I kid. I joke, sort of. Uh, sort of. So, sort of. what we're going to talk about tonight? Ooh, that was a we, we went off on a diatribe. Yeah, it was completely. You, you guys do that. Focus. That's okay. We got time. Uh, we're going to because we're about to talk <laughs> about the clock. We're about to talk about something really, really simple, which is death. Death, and and, and so death is a uh, is an interaction in the game. <laughs> That uh, comes up a lot because you kill a lot of things. I mean, that's kind of the point. Yeah, that's what I that's what I strive for. So, but death is a weird set of interactions, rule interactions, and it used to be really complicated. They've simplified it quite a bit. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to send this over to George to talk a bit <laughs> about uh, how death works. So, just go through the sort of basics of death. So, in your rules PDF, if you want to sing along with the the choir here. Uh, you can flip to page 91, uh, which is uh, the appendix on attack sequence timing. And I can't think of a drier subject of all of War Machine. Attack sequence timing. It's not really the most exciting thing. No. But what it, what is really exciting is uh, <laughs> when you can prevent one of these things from going off. Okay. So when... We get to the, so just give us the rule basic. How does so, when I'm when when you kill a model, what are the things that happen? So uh, when you shoot a model, it takes a bunch of damage. Uh, so the first thing you do is um, 
you, you, you take X amount of damage. If all of your boxes are marked, um, then it becomes disabled. Mm. Ooh, disabled. Yeah. Which is funny because you, you think, oh, it dies. But actually, no. the first thing that happens first is, is disabled. It's disabled. Right. Um, if, better parking. If nothing happens uh, and it gets its uh, little parking <laughs> sticker, then um, it becomes boxed. Ah, uh, right. And so boxed is the... So if you see something on the card that says if a model is boxed, yeah. then you then you resolve the rules that happen. Yeah. That. And if uh, nothing stops it from becoming... From keeping on with its uh, deathly dying, it then becomes destroyed. Okay. So there, there's other things that can happen that we know about. So yeah. those are the basic <laughs> stages of death yeah. in War Machine. Disabled, boxed, and destroyed. Destroyed. Yep. Um, but there's also removed from play. Now, removed from play uh, as an effect just means that the model uh, is completely removed from the game and cannot be returned. It's like right. it's vaporized. Yeah. It's, it still gets to tough. It, it doesn't, the remove from play doesn't well, remove those see, powers. See, here's the thing. Uh, most, uh, most removed from play effects say when this model is destroyed, it right. remove it, it from check. play. Right. No, no, no. When this model is yeah. destroyed, so it happens after it the box play. Uh, this tough happens. Tough is on uh, disabled. Right. When right. this model is disabled, so it never gets to the RFP. Right. right. So tough gets around the removed from play because it happens right before the disabled. Right. Now, often uh, models that uh, some some of the models that used to RFP uh, actually now have grievous wounds, which stop you being healed. And one of the things about uh, being disabled, if you actually, um, if you're actually uh, taking damage, the way you don't keep moving down the death chart is that you actually heal a boss. Right, right, right. So when you tough, you te- technically what happens is when you take damage, you get knocked down. You get and knocked you get down. One point back. Yeah, exactly. You get one you get one health and you're laying there on the ground with one health. All right, so let's send this over to our uh, sort of interactions guy. Scott, tell us a bit of the, I don't know uh, how into death you are and I want you to go deep dark into your morbidity. And off the top of your head, what are some weird interactions that happen with Mark 3 death? Uh, oh, I see you're going to throw me uh, under the bus there. Um I, I don't. I don't have any weird ones. It's uh, disabled, box destroyed. You just got to follow the path, and, and, and hasn't really, it hasn't is, led us to any real issues. And this is this is a change from Mark II, which was a bit more complex, right? Well, you, there was different places you could get off the bus there, basically. Right. So if you think all of the what happens when these two things happen at the same time problems that I have ever encountered with um, death of a model has always been because people didn't understand the different phases of death. Right, right, right. Uh, and they they didn't know when when things were triggering. Right. So if we just sort of keep that in our head, that disabled, box, destroyed yeah. thing, it's a little bit easier. So it's everybody's new mantra, disabled, box, destroyed. destroyed. DVD. Um, same as Mark II. It was the same thing. Yeah. You just had to follow the path. Some things, sometimes you could collect a, a corpse but not a soul or something. Right. But, I think they cleaned up some of that. So we did discover one bizarre interaction this week, which is dragoons. Oh yes, dragoons are the uh, the lovely uh, the lovely bit of hot pepper sauce thrown into the mix of this should be simple until you are dealing with a a model that doesn't die. Well, um, in this case, the model actually it I, it may be the only one of these interactions, but the model actually changes form uh, during the game so uh quick review of dragoons dragoons are cavalry models that right. um sometimes optionally and sometimes just base have a unhorsed component as well right. and when the uh horsed or the cavalry model takes enough damage you remove that model and you replace the uh model on the table with the uh unmounted version right so so let's go over to maelstrom it says it says right in the rules though it, it you replace it it's it's when it becomes um, disabled it actually becomes dismounted instead right so they kind of it's still DVD yeah it, it works it works fine the problem is and when you come up with this interaction yeah. which was <laughs> maelstrom you you tried to do uh, a mutagenesis for uh, uh, Thagrash one yeah. yeah 
um, because on a dragoon model and on that's a dragoon, when, yeah. And, and that's and when we discovered that, the, the, that you don't, it, is, it doesn't work. <laughs> it does not work. I was gonna say it wouldn't work because yeah, he's no. not disabled; he's dismounted. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's kind of one of those. But those are the types of things that you got to kind See? of look out for. <laughs> but and that but we should have had is, Scott in the room with us. Yeah. Well, but the thing is, that's not obvious when you're doing target prioritization on the table. You're like, yeah. oh, that's a model. I know its stats and how many boxes it has. I am going to cast on yeah, this model. If you don't know, that's a dragoon. Or more to the point, you you aren't paying attention to what exactly a dragoon means. Well, right? a dragoon, and let's be honest, dragoons. Uh, there's pretty much because it was part of a release. Um, every faction got a dragoon, or I, almost. I, I'd have to go through the books to figure it out. But there was a lot of factions that got dragoons at one point. I think they're just war machine. I can't think no, of a. I don't think there's dragoons. any hordes. Oh, really? Dragoons. I thought that there was. Uh, I don't think so. Oh, okay, well we'll find it. I thought there was a tuffalo dragoon, but maybe there isn't. Who knows? Yeah, it's horrible. There is one. Horthal is a dragoon. So, yeah. so dragoons were kind of released all at once, and they they so every you know it seems like almost every faction has one. I, I can't think of a faction that has more than one, but there might be. Um, Kador, it could be. I mean, it makes sense. And um, there's a dragoon caster, isn't there? I want to no. say no, no, they never got that far. But it's one of those things that was like a limited release. Like, yeah. let's do this; it'll be awesome, and it's caused conniptions ever since. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's kind of my the interesting. Opinion. The interesting thing about dragoons is that like you can go and charge them with like an armor piercing shot, do twenty damage, but just the horse dies. Yeah, the guy's still fine. It doesn't carry over onto the uh, the dismounted model. Right, which which makes that that makes that whole. That's why it's a weird thing, and I think that may be why we haven't seen more dragoons at this point, because they kind of went, oh shit, we just had to create an entire rule subset for five six models. Yeah. Well, I think dragoons are a very interesting model type. It gives the it gives the solo riding a horse a little bit something right. special, right? Because it can be solos can be kind of samey, right? Like this is it. If you aren't really worried about the fluff, this is the solo that gives me plus one to hit. This is the solo that gives me plus two damage, and having the dragoon gives you a solo that is a little bit more interesting. This is a cab solo that is that it basically can take. One attack of unlimited damage. Yeah, exactly. Which is mm. crazy. Um, okay, so let's leave that behind. Uh, any we've already talked about. We don't think with the Mark Three, there has not been as many crazy interactions. We want to hear from you guys who watch the show. If you come up with crazy interactions that in that death scheme, um, give it, it ping us. Tell us about it. We want to hear about them. We, we want to talk about them. Um, and we don't want to do them. And we don't so that we don't have that happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Us. Fifty um, percent of this podcast, so, in case people don't know, is us basically writing down this shit so this so, doesn't happen yeah. again. Yeah, that's why we that's why we let smarter people than us on the show. So, do you let somebody try to mutagenesis your dragoon, even though you know that it's a dragoon and they might not? Dick moves, sir. Yeah, well, dick, you dick you move. could. It is legal, so there's nothing. They're not doing anything wrong. Yeah, but I would say it's kind of a dick move. Yeah, yeah. Just to, just to put that, George didn't do that. Okay, so, <laughs> yeah, we we, we actually not make stopped the you before move, that, right? Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, so so we're we're going to go to our normal PSA. Don't do don't so one of the like things the during don't that. Do whole, what semi automagic does. Well, <laughs> during that game that you guys played, during that yeah. game that you guys played, the one thing that you did do is give we gave, we gave Jason basically a full reset. <laughs> when we figured that that rule, well, yeah, well, yeah, because nobody wants to win because the other guy. Didn't I won because yeah. of a dick move in a friendly game. Yeah. That's that's not that's not the way we play. No. So don't win by dick moves, people. Friendly game. Friendly game. <laughs> All um, right. Don't the play against me then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, noted. Uh, at least, well, the thing is, is we're generally we're generally three pints in at the pub, so yeah. that's yeah. all super friendly. All right, guys. So moving right along, we're gonna we're gonna do our round table this evening. And we talked about this briefly before. Uh, we've had Scott talk about the World Ender that's leading into Tabletop Gaming Expo. Um, and George, you've talked extensively over the last year about some of the events that you've run. Mm -hmm. um, again, I've helped you run some of those events as sort of a superfluous nipple. Um, yeah, I just sort of float around and you know uh, take care of a few things and basically tell you to calm down. Yeah. Through most of that's kind of my job when Becky's not around. Uh, let's talk a bit about events tonight. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I want to hear from our audience as well about uh, the events that they've loved, uh, uh, things that they've loved. So while we're talking about this, feel free, free to throw up sort of your favorite formats at events because that gives us ideas for the future. Event planning. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about becoming a PG. You have to plan, have to run events. That's the, yeah, that's, that's really what your that's job kind of, is. That's kind of your thing. You're, um, as a PG, the idea is to help people um find the game enjoy the game 
and to um, support both give them give them ways to play the game right yeah exactly so let's go to Scott first Scott what is it about uh, you you've been you know you ran the world ender and it, you know it got under your skin what is it about running an event that is fun what is the positive what are the pros to throw out to the audience uh, the, to, w- when you take on this task what's the great part uh, for me it, it was just to bring something that had never been done before so uh, the first event I ran was the OTC the Ontario Team Championships it was because the WTC was going on there was nothing like it in Canada nobody's done one so I was like well, maybe we should try I talked to a couple people that I was looking to partner up with to, to do it together and you know, just they're not they close friends or something. So kind of just sat by the wayside. So I finally just said, okay, fine, I'm going to just do this. I created the OTC to play in it. I wanted to play the five man. I wanted to experience what the WTC was like in that five man format. Um, you know, I expected four teams, maybe six. I was hoping. <laughs> uh, after six days, we had sixteen teams, and I was like, okay, now I'm terrified. I have to cap this. No more teams are allowed because I, I I don't even know what I'm doing with sixteen teams. And then when it came down to it, I didn't play because you know some people have issues about playing your own event. Even though I wasn't judging it, thank thankfully Tim Banky stepped up and uh, did a nice, great job nice. and and uh, and you know judged the first uh, the OTC, and then it it grows from there. So everybody was like. I went to bed that night. I mean, I was up 19 hours or something, running it and setting it up and, you know, running around, making calls, whatever. I went to bed that night, didn't get up to like one in the afternoon the next day. And I was a little scared. I was like, oh, God, I'm going to go on the Internet and uh, it's going to be like lots of. Tell the tell the audience to hold on. Okay, we got we, go. we got sound back. Scott, can you can you talk? Nope, we don't have Scott back. So the Zenix is working. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Maelstrom, yep. run around and unplug and replug the M audio. Okay, one more second, and we'll get all the sound back up. Wow, it was going so well. Everything was going Let's so. Let's kill well. the flow completely. There we go. All right, we're back, Scott. Uh, I think. I'm still here. All right, Yay. sorry. Well, I don't even know what happened there. We, I I think I know what's going on. What happened? Did somebody buy Gremlin Swarm recently? Yeah. All right. So uh, you were saying, where were we? We were talking about. Um, he wakes up one oh, one p.m. the hours. next day. One p.m. the next day. You're worried about the internet left. that that will follow right from there, and you you go on the internet and. And nothing but positive reviews. Like everybody loved it. They were raving about it. So I was just like, oh, so I was like, you know. I could relax, and I was like, "All right, you know what? That was really well. That went off really well and easy. So maybe I'll do it again." Awesome. And obviously, the next year we had uh, sixteen teams in twelve minutes, twenty-four teams in an hour, and then I was like, "Okay, that's enough. Can't do this anymore." That's impressive. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, George, how many how many events have you run? Oh God, uh, if we count store level events. Probably hundreds by now. If we talk, if we're talking about um, con level events, I've probably run five. So, what is it? Uh, I mean, you've been pretty much since the day you st- it was like a week after you started playing War Machine. You were like, I'm going to go run an event. Well, I, I got to give a big call out to PO on this one um, because he's the guy who got me into being a PG. Uh, I showed up for I think it was my second War Machine event. Um, and me being a conscientious player, I showed up an hour early, and um, P.O. showed up 10 minutes late. And so I was like, you know what? I want to be in a world where that never happens to someone. And so I started the path to become a PG. Uh, And um, I wanted there to be events that I would want to go to, was kind of the idea. Can, we're just going to ask the stream quickly if we have sound back because they're still saying that we don't have sound, which is weird because I've got audio on the Zenix. Remember, they're, uh, they're okay. We'll just double. Yeah, they're behind, but I don't think they're. It's been a no. He, I think he just said it was more entertaining without oh, the sound. Oh, yeah, I understand that. All right, sorry about that. We didn't <laughs> wow. mean to interrupt. Uh, oh. Ouch! Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. So basically, I started down this path where um, I wanted to go to events, and I what I felt was somebody needed to make events that I wanted to go to. Right. So I want to ask Maelstrom, you've gone to several events now. Yeah, you're, I have, You're an actually. event goer. Um, yeah, because you guys forced what me are to. Your, yeah, because we make you. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what very we, interesting. You have been dropped in way quicker than almost anybody else that I can think of. Because right. most people have this fear of events. Yep. And it, it, this drives me bonkers as an organizer. Mm-hmm. Because there is everybody in a local event from um, someone who is... Re- routinely on WTC teams to a guy I know um, I can beat probably right. with one hand tied yeah. behind my back. Um, and then people are like, I can't go to the tournament. There'll be people playing there. And yeah. I'm There'll like, be people I don't know. Isn't that like what you, what you want to do? But we had you just dumped right in. Okay, so what yeah. are your favorite, uh, in, in the events you've gone to, what have been your sort of favorite things? Well, Sue, was, uh, Sue was my favorite one. What, but what but were the events within the events that you loved? I, I just like Iron Gauntlet, honestly. Iron I, Arena? I, I, Iron, Iron Arena. Arena, yeah. Sorry, not Iron Gauntlet. <laughs> Big difference there. Right. Um, I like just going in and playing uh, the more relaxed, casual games with right. people because mm-hmm. I'm not a competitive player, really, at, at, at the heart of things. I'm not, like... You know, I, I enjoy playing the game for fun you, you rather your, than rules lawyering you don't get and your stuff five, like that. So. Uh, you don't get your five get games in a week, uh, at least three at the no. store, at least two online. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. uh, so, Scott, what are your sort of uh, favorite events when you go to events or your favorite to run? Um, I When I go to the cons, I enjoy the ones where, like something like Captain Con, where you have to qualify for the Sunday to join the masters it's not just you just don't sign up and go it's um, not an open it's not an open no you just you actually have to win your way in i yeah, just that's the competitive side of me right they, i mean they have iron arena there but you either have to win like the you know the, the tier tournament or you know an overnight or the team event just, there's something else you have to do to get into the sunday you don't just sign up and go just makes it a little more prestigious for us. I know, like the group of guys that we go with, it's always bragging rights that you qualify for Masters or not at you know Captain Con or Temple Con or whoever they, however it's done down there. Uh, I, I'll speak. Mm-hmm. I, I think my favorite events. I mean, I love playing Masters. I don't. I did not enjoy playing Iron Gauntlet. Mm. Uh, I, I like Iron Arena just fine. <laughs> I wasn't big on the. Um, that three list format was not super fun for me. Um, even though I liked getting points for just being painted and or, or having a good army just because I paint a lot. Uh, and, of course, my favorite events to run are always the ones that are just full of silliness. Like doing the – we did um, we did the roundtable tournament at the pub that was super, super fun where it was just quick, yeah, um, ridiculous. That's my favorite kind of stuff. Beer yeah. machine or bar machine, yeah. depending on, on how we do it. Um, I have not had a chance to play um, the um, – what's it called? Uh that format where you just take three casters, I always forget. Oh, um, Thunderdome. Thunderdome. I haven't, but but it always looks like a blast. And that's yeah, I haven't got to play that yet. The yeah. funny part about um, going to things like the SOO is, I play Masters and I enjoy playing Masters. I always do, uh, or or announcing them, whatever I end up doing. But I, I enjoy playing Masters. But my favorite thing has always been the games that happen after. Oh yeah, and it's usually like my favorite games are the ones that I have on Sunday. With somebody that is a friend of mine that we just haven't played in forever, and we just play because I only see them at cons or whatever. We play a ridiculous game, and that's and and you try to be the loudest and the having the most fun. I don't know how to put it any other way. Um, G, over to you. You've run a lot of events. What are what are sort of your favorite formats to run um, out there? To actually like events to run, I like the the bog standard steamroller. Uh, or masters it's the basically the same thing mm-hmm. um it is it is a little bit uh terrifying um and a lot rewarding when things happen um like just the way that everything comes together uh getting everybody paired up getting them out getting them going i wouldn't say it's the most quote unquote fun event but i think it's the event i like running the right. most mm-hmm. So, um, what are some tools? I'm going to send this out to to Scott and to and to G as well. But um, name sort of some tools that help you run events better. Um, I know there's some computer tools out there. Uh, I know that there's some PGs. They're tools um, <laughs> or, or whatever. <laughs> what what sort of come up with? Give me some for people that want to run their first event and have no idea where to start. 
what where are the sort of what are the resources that work scott what are your resources that you go to to help you run events uh well friends first off because the the otc is pretty big i i couldn't do it alone there's just no way the amount of work even just lugging tables into the place i think we had 60 tables at the last otc so you need some help volunteer something to get that going um, and then on the other side, you know, it's nice to have a judge involved where, you know, someone can make those difficult calls because they have, you know, the experience under their belts and then a pile of PGs to be there to also run around and make some of the easier calls like line of sight, stuff like that. It's, uh, it's the support network when you're going that kind of level though, like 120 players is, uh, it's a little bonkers. I wouldn't obviously recommend that for somebody's first event. Oh, heck no. Uh, so PG Semi-Auto Magic, tell me about some of the computer tool. You, you've played around with a few different things. There there are actually a, a good deal of computer tools. Uh, some of these you will have to ask your local PG for access to, but they are accessible to everyone. It's not that uh, only PGs are allowed to use these tools. It's just only PGs have quick access to them. Um, there, The old standard is Do You. Um, it's a um, Java program, so it'll run on anything. Um, and it is sort of the, it was the first, as far as I can tell, of these sort of online tournament software. Mm -hmm. uh, it does have a few eccentricities, um, and it has not sort of moved into the digital media age. Um, like, it doesn't communicate with anything ex externally. Mm -hmm. um, after that, uh, PG Swiss um, is a wonderful program. Uh, it is sort of the successor to do you uh i'm not sure if he has a mac version yet um but it is a really great piece of software it also um allows you to uh do some reporting online as well so you can generate html files and stuff so that you can put it up so that people can see what's going on um the the one that i'm currently using actually was originated for guild ball and it's a program it's actually a website called tiebreak um, at tiebreak.co.uk is their, is their address. And it is a fully social media aware application. So for example, it will do, um, things like live, uh, uh, layouts of all the tables. It will do, uh, live event reporting, all that kind of stuff so that you can see immediately what happens. Um, there's one feature that none of these do yet that uh, if anybody is listening who works on any of these pieces of software, the, the killer app feature is when I am taking people's sheets in and their names, let me put in a phone number and then have it be able to text them oh. their what? table assignments. Oh, that That's, would be amazing. Because oh if, if somebody, the first guy to figure that out in a hall of 128 people where everybody only has to look at their phone to find out where their table pairing is, that will be the app that everybody will use. So uh, br our, one of our uh, regular viewers, Brush Chewer, has said that uh, the, it wasn't originally made for Guild Ball. Oh. Um, so apparently it was made for Warm Hearts, but uh, they put Guild Ball on it recently. Oh, okay. So. I heard of it only in the context of Guild Ball. All right. Uh, schooled. So, yeah, there you go. absolutely. Um, you've learned <laughs> something new. Uh, so the next question is, uh, well, this is kind of interesting. Uh, Scott, you were talking about loving qualifiers. Um and, and how, you know, it, it's like it's a bit more iconic type of thing to get through and, and qualify. Um, the question, I, I guess I want to throw this out to you for when when are you qualified to play? Like, when do you feel like a player should come out to a tournament? Is it this is, I think, the biggest fear that most new players have. Am I qualified? So, I still feel that way. Yeah. So so how do you feel about that? <laughs> tell it. Tell it. When when is it? When are you ready to go to a tournament? I I don't know if you're ever ready to go to your first one. That's always <laughs> yeah, but like I mean, the first time I was a diehard against tournaments when I first started playing this game, just because of the type of players that I perceived them to be. You know, they were more of the you know because they knew more than you did, right? Like they knew more than I did, so I felt right. like they, it was a, it was a gotcha moment all the time, and I was just losing games because of that. So the first time we went out to a tournament, it was more of a, like a mangled metal thing where you kind of got to ease into it. There were no units involved. It was just beasts or jacks, and it kind of, you know, you tried to get into it that way. And then it was like, oh, that wasn't so bad. You had a good time. You laughed and whatever. And then he's like, oh, I'm going to do it again. And then next thing you know, you're playing 50-point masters and, you know, trying to crush people. Yeah, I, I think yeah, I, I, I really, you know, that was feeding you uh, a bit there. I think the most important thing is, is we want more players to go. 
Um, our community has grown by our attendance at cons and tournaments. True. Um, I ha- I would not still be playing War Machine today, and I would not have a podcast if it weren't for go uh, you forcing me to go to Kingston the first time. Yeah. Um, and playing my f- at the Nexus for the first time. That, uh, that's what you guys did to me too. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's it. It's being <laughs> part of that. C- you can't grow a community unless we all actually meet face to face, and True. you can do it at your store, um, which is great. So go yep. to your local store and play. And get a couple of games in, but you're not going to play that game against that guy that you've never played before in your life if you don't go to a tournament. By the way, if you are sitting in your basement right now and uh, you only play against four other people, you know you know who you are. Um, please get out to a store, introduce yourself to a PG. Um, they they aren't that scary, most of them. Well, you are. Well, yeah, but you, you'll get over it eventually. I and not of, all of them cheat either. Yeah. <laughs> Again, just me. Uh, but your local PG will be able to help you with any rules questions you have. We'll be able to let you know what events are going on. Because um, a lot of the time, uh, just to give you guys a quick estimate, we see about 50 people in the Ottawa area at different stores. Mm-hmm. Um, based on the amount of sales of War Machine product, we have about another 150 people playing in basements. Yeah, just, that, just playing with their friends. Or yeah, playing like with their friends. Marvel. And I'm not saying you have to come out to the store to play or anything, but there's probably a lot of resources that we could, uh, you know, give to you as as a home player. Yeah. That that we just as PGs were like, how 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 do I reach these people? <laughs> how do I reach these kids? And I mean, as fun as the game is, just playing in your basement with the the same you know the same group of people all the time expanding to different people helps you learn a lot more about the game oh you're not different gonna, factions yeah, you're not going to learn the rules until you've yeah. played against somebody that goes <laughs> who actually knows, who actually yeah, knows the rules. that's right yeah <laughs> uh so i think we're running well we're not running out of time we actually got more times m- more things to talk um the next question is and we'll we'll start with scott because he does have a licensed event coming up and in, in, he'll he, mm. he can talk a bit about mm, um event. The, what what is the general age group of the people coming to tournaments, and um, is that why we need a bar? <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the OTC, I don't. I, I mean, maybe two or three were under nineteen, but I'm pretty sure it was. I find that the War Machine community is a little older. Yeah, mm. I, yeah, I think so. I, I I mean, our entire community. I think we maybe have two or three younger it's, players. Yeah, it's eighteen. I up. I, uh, I always tell people that uh, War Machine is the game you play when you've gotten tired of everybody else's bullshit. <laughs> so <laughs> right, when, you, when you're tired of playing with a deck of cards in Malifaux, you're tired of GW randomly raising prices yes. or a bucket of dice, when you're tired of all that other shit, you look for a game with a really good stable community and really good stable rules. And most people don't get tired of that shit till you know, their late 20s. And by then, we're ready to have you Welcome as a human being. The fold. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, if you're going to run an event, what? How do you get a judge? I think that's. I mean, we've got uh, our buddy Tim is, is watching the show right you now. You borrow, which is awesome. you steal, you promise them anything you the, can. So, yeah. so, but let's say you can't get a judge, you, or you, you know, or, or maybe. Well, hopefully, you'll have a PG that's willing to come out and help you out. What do you do about um, judging interaction? So let's go to Scott first. Uh, you obviously had a judge, but if you ended up having a run-in event where you don't have, uh, well, most of us would be able to get a PG, but if you have to do some judging, what do you do? I mean, the rule books are there. So the world ender happened. Uh, I didn't have a judge. didn't have any PGs. I just, uh, I just did it on my own. Um, I mean, again, the world ender invitational, the quality of players were so high I don't <laughs> think I had to make a call. Like everybody was pretty good, and then just made their own calls, and they never really maybe one line of sight issue, and that was it. Just to to have a third eye on it, or you know, another set of eyes on it. But otherwise, it was it was pretty good. So, PG semi auto magic. You've been called in um, as as a PG. Yeah. As you had to play judge several oh, times. Yeah, yeah. Somebody yeah. else in judge, and you're the only one around. Suddenly, yeah, somebody said, everyone, the real, <laughs> that the real old judge, horror story, the real judge is that we all roll our eyes like, oh, crap, we got George. Well, um, we could pause the clock and wait. So for- what, are, what is your role when you get called? Because because it's going to happen to guys who organize their first tournament. So what is your role? Scott, what do you do? Actually, Scott brought up something I want to call out there. Uh, Scott's not a PG. Right. I am not. And you do not have to be a PG to run events. Exactly. Please, if you want to run an event, just 
walk in the door, say to your local store owner, hey, I want to run an event. Is that okay? 99% of the time they'll say yes or we have magic that night. Those are the two answers you get. Um, so once you actually have a date, just grab the steamroller packet and run an event. Please, it's not... Do not feel that you have to be a PG to run events. Uh, and I think that's another one of those things I really want to get out there. Um, as to your question, when when I'm called over to a table to make a judge call, um, well, the first thing that goes through my head is uh, Tim Benke's voice uh, <laughs> telling me to read the card, read yep. it again. What did the card say? Um, but other than that, uh, what I always try and do is um, look at the interaction on the table Sometimes it's a common interaction that just has to be, oh, yeah, this happens all the time. No, you don't have to put Fury onto a beast you've just transferred to. You know, sometimes people have just gotten the rule wrong. Uh, other times, the other type of call is, uh, is a weird interaction. Right. So it's like these two things happen at the same time. How do they happen? How do they interact? Most of the time that can be solved, at least in Mark III, by saying the person, if two things trigger on the same thing, the active player decides right. how they trigger. Exactly. And that, that's really easy. And the third thing that you get when you walk over to a table is, do they have line of sight from here to here? Yeah. And then it's literally... And then it's just you pulling out a laser. Yeah, you pull out a laser, you get as close as you yeah. can, and you, you just you yeah, just make it, the call. So, I mean, it, it's no secret that the the one thing, uh, you know, I, to channel uh, channel some of our friends, the one thing that I want to be able to do is make, make decent judge calls. And I think 90% of the times that I'm called in to make a call at any game, whether it's a tournament or not... It's it's almost always a line of sight issue or a movement issue. Yeah. So and it, it's usually a measurement problem where parallax is an issue. Absolutely. Um, and in those cases, you have to kind of do the best you can and uh, find as many ways to get the best measurement you can, whether it's proxy bases or whatever. Get the tape measure as close as possible. Use uh, widgets, whatever it takes to get that close, me the best measurement you can. And what's weird is when you finally get the proper widget to make that measurement, which is generally what happens, it, you're generally wrong. Yeah. What, it was what I, it's like, <laughs> no, no, you're fine. You could totally make, oh, wait, I've got a two-inch, uh, nope, never mind. You, nope, couldn't, nope. you couldn't have actually touched There's that. There's no game. way you can do that. Uh, so anyways, let's leave that behind because, gentlemen, it is time, oh, it is time for the lightning round. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is a time for the lightning round. Uh, it is. Scott, it's been a while since you've had to do the lightning round. Hope you're not too rusty, buddy. Huh? You ready for this? <laughs> you ready? For <laughs> uh, the last time was so ugly because LeBlanc crushed it, so you made the questions harder. Uh, and well, I don't got worry. Crushed. I've gotten. It's it's been it's been almost a year since you've had to do this, so I I may have tweaked and tuned my questions a little bit. Now you two don't look at the paper this time. I know. <laughs> This time? That's not why I've been <laughs> getting answers. But by the amount of these I've been getting right, I think it's blatantly obvious I've it's never true. read that paper. All right. So, of course, tonight's questions will have something to do with death. We'll probably, uh, and, and there's, you know, there's, and, and of course, we'll, we'll so have like to throw in a. Cricks? Yeah. We'll have, <laughs> Nothing but Cricks questions. So put on your black eyeliner and get ready for some death questions. <laughs> when is a model with no boxes disabled? When it has taken. Ding. Uh. uh I have to give it to G. You dung, dung, dung in at the right time. Go for it. When it has taken one point of damage. Yes, when it suffers one point suffers. of damage. Suffers. Suffers. Don't use that word. That'll get you in a lot of trouble. <laughs> suffers is a All bad right. word. Ladies and gentlemen, question number two. What is Denegra 3's movement? Denny 3's movement. Anybody? Ding. I'm going to give that one to Scott. I'm going to guess nine inches. It is nine inches. Would you have said nine inches? Yeah. You were going to say nine inches? I, I was on that big flying thing. I was like, going to yeah, say gonna cavalry. All right. Cavalry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This, is, this one's... Because this I'm a smart ass. Is she this classed as a cab? I don't know. This one's for me. Question number three. What is the range on the Commodore's incendiary shot? Uh, 14? No. Mm. It's 16. 16 on the wow. incendiary shot. Yeah, Damn. that cannon can play it a game can, of hide and go fuck itself. It's got itself. the longest spray. It's got the longest AOE. and Yeah, it's redunk. Yeah. Uh, I, said, love OP. I love that. I love that damn, damn straight. thing. Uh, question number four: How many boxes does the Tactical Arcanist Corp Grunt have? Uh, 
Scott. Just one? Yeah, he's only got the one box. They they nerfed the crap out of the TAC. They used to have five. Oh, good, okay, good. I was thinking they had five. Yeah. <laughs> uh, question number five. What power does Alton Ashley's gun, Bucking <laughs> Jenny, have? Go, <laughs> Scott. Now, just the base gun is PAL twelve, but if you're shooting a war beast, no. It's what D3 what is that? Three. What is the sorry? What is the the ability, uh, the ability on he, that? He gun? means the special. So I meant the on special that effect on that gun. I know yeah, what you what meant. I did answer that. I said his base gun is PAL twelve, but his against a war beast, it's D three plus three. Ah, uh, grievous wounds. I was looking for grievous wounds. Grievous. That's not wounds. what I was thinking. I was thinking the damage. You wanted damage output. Uh, and I, I, I shouldn't have said power. That was. Yep. I meant. That's I meant why ability. you threw up. You you said said a, rule. Uh, all right, I give you all a point because I screwed up. <laughs> How's that? You all, we matter. all get a point. Mifgorex is minus a point. You knew what I meant, though. Nope. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Question number six. What is the cost on Saren's spell, Blightbringer? Eh. Uh, three. Is that your final answer? No, two. <laughs> it's four. I'm gonna four. say. I'm gonna say about That's 145 dollars. It's, it's <laughs> 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 question number seven. What two weapons does Holden the Last carry? I don't even know who that is. Uh, no wonder I don't use Sarah it's the new anymore. Char- it's a new character for the new uh, for the new uh, uh, campaign. I'm gonna say skidding knife and long rifle. You were pretty close. I'm going to give you a point. It is knife and hunting rifle. Ah, uh, hunting rifle. But not skinning knife, just a knife and a hunting rifle. That's what he's got. All right, question number eight. How much healing does the spell psychosurgery do? Eh. Uh, D3. Is that plus, your final answer? D3 plus one. <laughs> it's D3 plus one. you got to stop asking I that. know, I know. It's I'm, D3 I'm, plus I'm, one? I'm trying to help the little guy out, you know? Sometimes Ringo what? needs help Scott's picking up the, the one who's low. Oh, it's right. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> but he didn't ding. He didn't ding. All right. Question number nine. What is the name of Makeda's weapon? Makeda three, and specifically. Oh. Makeda three, it's question number eight, so it's, it's got to be very hard. Nine. So, anybody? Makeda three. What's the name of his weapon? Who? Makeda three. <laughs> Does anybody play Scorn? I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna name it Bob. It's not named Bob. They're all named Bob. Are they still it's like a faction. The, it's like playing 40k and somebody asking those squats. They don't exist. Well, here's the best part. It's got the best name ever. The Talon of Morzul. Okay, that is. Kind it's of got awesome. the only reason why I asked. Brush that Chewer knew it. He did. Wow, wow that's good she job. Did. Brush. Yeah. Um, question number ten. This is the Minty Fresh question. Oh, it's actually from last week, but Minty gave me two questions, so I'm carrying it over to this week. <sighs> Here we go. <laughs> Loosen up. <clears throat> what were the list-building restrictions for the Mangler in Escalation? What? Those are just random words thrown together. No, no. <laughs> um, it's tough. It's actually the, some like crazy oh, restrictions. Oh, I've got a cheat here. I've got a cheat here. What is your cheat? Are you going to ding in first? No. Anybody? That's why I'm cheating. It? Ding. All right, go. Uh, he could only be taken with one caster, but I'm trying to think of which one it was. Uh, tr- Magnus? I'm going to say Magnus. Could only be taken with Magnus, specifically Magnus the Traitor, and he was F.A. what? Oh, God, I have no idea. Uh, two. Uh, F.A. two? F.A. two. So, really? like the only so literally, ca- so this was a jack that was produced for exactly one caster. Exactly. And, and anybody who owned that caster could only own a max of two. That's right. This seems like a bad way to it's sell a model. the craziest thing ever. <laughs> right. That's All a right, guys. really interesting question. So that was the lightning round for this week. Uh, I, I'm going to I'm gonna claim our, our winner was uh, PG Semi-Auto Magic for the first time in a long. You finally wow. taken on the reins. Uh, who uh, in the chat was killing it? Brush Chewer was killing it. Brush Chewer was killing it. Yeah. Good job, yeah. Brush Chewer. Uh, so that's Hamilton that's Computer Sarah, Geek right? was, yeah, yeah. Sarah. Uh, Thank you, Sarah, and, uh, for rocking it. You. Yeah. Uh, so before we go tonight, we've got a few little shout outs to do. Um, G, I'm going to get you to talk about upcoming events, and Scott can do the same. Uh, but before we do that, I want to talk about the guys who keep the lights on to, to channel men off. Ottawa channel. River Power. Uh, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, well, first off, I mean, we got We oh, haven't no, done the this. people who pay Ottawa River Power. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. so I got to thank, of course, uh, Maelstrom <laughs> once again for letting us use his basement, even though it's full of fruit flies right now. It is. Um, your mom is you coming know, over, good. and she's gonna she's gonna help from fix Nova Scotia. It. She's gonna go clean it up and fix it. <laughs> no, she's just gonna yell. Uh, yeah. Jay, Jay's mom is watching. Yep. So. She uh, does that. She's she does weird that. like that. 
Uh, she's a lovely woman. Uh, so Shh. I got to give a shout out to <laughs> the Wizards Tower, who they actually pay our bills and make sure that we can do this stream every week. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you don't know about the Wizards Tower, you can check them out online. Uh, they do uh, deliver all over Canada. Uh, they do a one stock war machine and hordes, so you can get your stuff there. They are fantastic. And you know they're doing a good job when even I've heard of Wizards Tower. Yeah, they're yeah. The, they're like this Ottawa store that even the Toronto guys are like. They and they supported the OTC this year. Uh, they did. They were awesome. And Nacho, I, I think the guys, I think the kid's name was Nacho who came up. He did a great yeah. job. Nacho's awesome. Nacho is. Awesome. I would like to give a shout out to uh, Jillian. Um, one of the managers at the Wizards Tower. It mm-hmm. will be her last day Ooh. at the Tower tomorrow. Goodbye, Jillian. She's, uh, she's moving on and up uh, to bigger and better things. She's the though. one that approved our uh, that yeah, approved our exactly. budget. Exactly. I don't know what's going on oh, after that. Oh, we, we, oh. we might actually have to tell Dave, and then he won't. I'm tell gonna have to else. sleep with somebody else. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, she <laughs> she has been a great friend of the podcast and a uh, great person to work with uh, yep. as far as organizing yep, events absolutely. at the store. She's great to deal with at the store, too. She yep. was always one of my favorite okay, people. Okay, so wrapping, wrapping up our love fest for the Wizards Tower, go mm-hmm. check them out. They also carry uh, pretty much everything you could want in Magic the Gathering. So. Yeah. All right, so beyond Wizards Tower, mm-hmm. um, I just want to also talk a little bit about our online store because I know this is the boring part. Everybody's like, oh, you're going to talk sales now. But, but the thing is, is, is that we're just three dudes who make a podcast and the way that we keep doing this podcast uh, because it does cost crap Yeah, is, surprisingly. Uh, is that you guys go and buy cool stuff. One of those cool things, the ultimate Moose Machine token. Yeah, yep. they um, can't see it at all. They on the can't see it at all. Uh, could you run over yeah, to the I'll camera? Run. I did so this, this last week, so I'll, I mean, this Moose Machine feet token. Let me talk about some of the qualities. It's waterproof. Yeah, I washed it. It it uh, it it can survive a wash. Uh, it is made of one hundred percent pure gold. Um, <laughs> it weighs a ton. It's it it not only tells you when your feet has happened. Turn it over. Um, but. It is a bottle opener. So when you're like, oh, I feed it. Oh, crap. I have no way to open my beer. Boom. You do. You can also, it is a two, it's exactly two inches. So you can measure, use it as a measuring tool. And uh, yeah, it. Uh, anything else? Like, I'd like to call out the sweet uh, fan art on the back. Oh, yes. The fan art. The, who, the moose. We, yeah, we haven't given that guy his props yet. No. It was sent in by a fan that, that there are moose. That there are moose. And of course. <laughs> oh, God <laughs> damn it. You're going to have to edit the crap out of this. Yeah, I know. It's going to suck. All right. So we lost sound. I'm not sure when we lost it. Uh, but uh, we done our shout out for the Wizard Tower. We've done the shout out for the coin. Uh, we have t-shirts. Go online to get the t-shirts. Uh, awesome. I'm going to send this out to Scott. What events do you have coming up in your area? Uh, we have a WTC three-man fundraiser for the boys on September 17th, which is probably the weekend before they go at uh, X Planet. So uh, if you're looking to play some three-man games, it's a lot of fun. Uh, contact X Planet and reserve your spot today. Uh, G, what events do we have going on in the Ottawa area? Uh, next one is uh, near the end of September. Uh, it is a OTC qualifier for the Wizards Tower Sweet. team. Um, there is also in, at the end of October. Got to give a shout out to Two Headed Pharaoh. It is a um, uh, a two man playing at the same time team. So your player A and B. Um, and uh, you bring two 35-point lists, and you fight against two other 35-point lists. that sounds cool. Yeah, it should be neat. All right, so I, I apologize tonight for some of the sound breaks. Uh, hopefully we can edit that together into a coherent uh, radio show. It shouldn't be too, easy, uh, too difficult. Uh, shouldn't I want be too easy. Make sure that you all know that we, of course, are available on the Muse on Minis Network, so if you, are, uh, if you are listening to the cast on YouTube right now or you're only doing it on Twitch and you miss one... 
<coughs> just subscribe to us on Museum Minis and you'll get all that cool stuff. And those guys over there at Museum Minis keep uh, also help keep the lights on. So mm-hmm. awesome also times. Is, I think there's a show coming up after us too, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, don't forget about it. Don't Troll scrum. Blood Scrum. Well, yep. you said it right. I'm impressed. Well, because <laughs> I've been practicing. Uh, yep. And and of course, uh, we also want to give a shout out to Fraser's uh, reporting tool, which yeah. right yeah. now is everybody uh, should be using. Yeah. Do it. It's super it. awesome, and it's a great way for us to see uh, how the meta is breaking down. And which who. army I'm going to buy next. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, guys. I think that's it. I'm going to uh, let everybody sort of say goodbye. Scott, thanks so much for joining us on the show again. It's been great yeah. to have you back. We love you, Scott. Thanks for having me. <laughs> OTC uh, OTC registration November first. Don't forget, nine a.m. It's coming up fast. Whoop, whoop. And yeah, we'll be there. That's the plan. Yep, yep. And uh, uh, G, thanks so much again for your vast knowledge of cheating. And Maelstrom, hi. Uh, thanks. Welcome for letting us use your basement. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, like the drums. Thanks. All right, guys. <laughs> that's it. Uh, hit that button. The one that ends this thing. Yeah, that, that one. Yeah. Yep. Dice down. Moose Machine and This Death Clock Has 60 Minutes is a proud part of the Muse on Minis Network. Podcasts go online every Thursday morning. You can watch the show live every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern on Twitch and keep in touch with us on our Facebook page. Just Google Moose Machine. If you can't find us, you're doing the internet wrong.